everyone. I'm your host Vanessa Obura and we are back with Let's Talk Marketing. And today's topic is an interesting one. Dark data. What is dark data? Is your organization leveraging on it? Well, joining me in this discussion, I have Ikechi Okoronko. Ikechi is helping Mindshare clients to leverage data in new ways and embrace innovations in predictive analytics. Ikechi is working across all Mindshare U US accounts to ensure that analytics is consistently adding value through stakeholders, partnerships, and clear storytelling. And, we, and with this, let's join Ikechi. Ikechi, welcome. welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for joining me in today's discussion. Thanks for the invitation. Happy to be here. Ikechi, what is dark data? I mean, it's been a topic that everybody has been talking about, but it seems like there's no real clear um, solution to it. What is dark data? Dealing, being that you've been dealing with data for quite some time now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, when you hear the term dark data, it has somewhat of an ominous, scary connotation, but really what dark data is, is, you know, as the information, as an organization is collecting information and, you know, processing it and storing it um, during their regular business activities, it's really the data that is not being used for other purposes, such as, you know, from an analytics perspective, uh, from an operational perspective um, and other things, right? So, you know, when you think about dark data, the, the terminology is as you're collecting, storing and processing everything, you're using a small piece of it to add value for the business, but then there's a lot of it, most of it. And, and you know, a lot of publications have talked about how almost like 90% of your data isn't being used to kind of add value in a certain way. It's just being processed and stored. Um, so that's what we would categorize as dark data, that 90% that's just sort of sitting there in what we would like to say, either cold storage or hot storage. Um, and, and not being used. 8% is a very high, it's a high percentage. And um, so to dwell on that, personally, um, um, as business owners, I mean, I think they would personally like to know, how should, should they begin to analyze their dark data? Where do they begin? Where do they start? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think, and part, part of the, the entry to, to answer that question is why, right? Like, why should I analyze the data? And, you know, the first thing you have to understand is you're storing this data and, you know, uh, no matter what sort of stack you're using, there's an expense to storing the data. So then you kind of have to think of, okay, if I'm paying to store this data, is there some sort of ROI that I can get on top of this data? So that's really where now the question becomes, okay, should I be using dark data? So, um, the, the, the real answer I would give is, is sort of uh, to take a step back, right? And to really think about what are the metrics that matter to the outcomes or throughput that my business is, exists to drive, right? So, you know, in my industry, we work in the, in, the, um, in the advertising space. And so we're working with data from a variety of different sources. We're working with client data. We're working with data coming out of the ad servers that we work with, you know, demand side platforms, supply side pa platforms third-party data, you know, um, and then also, you know, we have internal data where, you know, as we're doing what we're doing, we're generating signals and all of that stuff forms this universe of data that's available to us. So one of the questions we like to ask is, you know, what are the metrics that matter for, to, that we can connect to how we drive value, that can connect to outcomes? And more often than not, we're looking at what the client outcomes need to be. And so when, for, for like my, my organization specifically, what we're doing is we're using machine learning techniques, we're using a different types of analysis and sometimes even just pure common sense to create frameworks to map all the different metrics that we're collecting from all the different sources and trying to create causal links to those business outcomes. And I think from there, that's where you'll start to understand potentially some of the metrics that you should be looking at um, that, are, that are part of that dark data categorization could potentially be interesting signals to help you improve whether it's like your internal operations or it could be um, something that could be predictive of of an outcome right so so that's really kind of like the starting point is really asking yourself why should I be using this data 
Um, some of it may not make sense, you know, so you would probably, you know, either deprecate the data and right, you know, stop storing it. Um, or if you need to store it for compliance reasons, you would put it into what's called cold storage, which, you know, doesn't cost as much as hot storage, where basically it's ready, readily available to be pulled. So it's, I think organizations just need to kind of, number one, ask themselves, you know, why I need, you know, if I'm paying for storing this data, why am I storing it? Can I use it for something? Then go through that process of understanding, okay, can I use some form of analytical rigor to connect that to the things that are important for my business? And then from there, you will start to understand which pieces of data can be useful to your business. Because not all of it will be, um, but you kind of really need to go through that process um, to, to, to determine that. Interesting. So, personally, okay, um, as an organization, you talked about ma machine learning. I mean, those, the, those are tools that organizations clearly have to have a budget for. So, as, let's say, I have a company, according to, you know, you and you work for Mindshare, and, and I know you offer the services, you know, on, on understanding data. But as an organization, um, why should I, as the owner, invest? What are the benefits of analyzing dark data? Why should I invest, you know, in acquiring, acquiring a machine learning tool to help me understand my dark data? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. And I think a lot of leaders need to be asking the question that you just posed. It's, you know, when you're running a business or running an organization, it, it, there's a level of importance in understanding what you know and what you don't know, right? And I think, you know, when you think about what you know, it's the core competency of your business, right? So whatever service you provide, you deliver that to clients, you, you get paid for it, you make money, that's great. But then you're in a competitive environment and you have to be aware, what are my competitors doing to be either faster, more precise, you know, more scalable than I am. So now you need to start to interrogate all the different things that you're doing to, 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 be, to remain competitive. So I think that's the first obvious reason why you should think about making these investments. Now, the, to answer the question of what type of investments you should make is a, is a, is a, is a second phase. But I think, you know, you know, that first phase needs to be understood because a lot of organizations, you know, and I've, I've worked with many different clients and, 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 and companies. And, you know, if things are going well, you sort of, you're fine, you know, you just kind of keep going and they don't really try to push the envelope. And, and, and I think to some degree in our industry, there's sometimes a lot of noise, right? A lot of firms and companies will come in and say, we can take all this data and, you know, mishmash it together and give you all these insights and it can end up being this very expensive thing. But, um, you know, when I think about interrogating whether you should make investments in these things, I like to think about it in, in, from a framework perspective. So when you think about, you know, people, process, and product, thinking about the service that you provide, you know, maybe try and categorize the way your organization is structured across those three areas, right? And the reality is, if there's a lot of data, so like if you're already thinking about dark data as an organization, that means you're generating a lot of data and that's, that's, that's an issue for you. So when you think about people, process, and product, it's like, how can I effectively look at the data that's coming in as quickly and as accurately as possible? And if that is a, a question you're asking and some, something that's important to you, then you need to make some you know, interesting or like significant investment or meaningful investment in a platform to help you do that. Now, the reason why I say that is, you know, human beings, we're amazing creatures, uh, but we have limitations. Um, one of those limitations is our computational power, right? Like our brains are powerful machines or, you know, biological machines, but there's, there's, there's a capacity for us to, you know, process information and put from different places and actually doing it very quickly. So we need, you know, tools to help us do that. So. And then another thing is from a data governance perspective, you know, as data is coming in, yes, you may be collecting data, but it might be categorized in the wrong ways. And so you need to have a platform to help you do that better. And you need to invest more in that platform. And if you think about the equation across those three things, people, process, and platform, you need more of the platform side because the more data that comes in, if you're more heavy on the people side, the less scalable you are, right? 
because you can, if you have more on the platform side, if you have more computational power, if you have more storage space, if you have, uh, you know, tools that can allow you to, you know, automate certain things, it will, you'll be able to grow faster than if it's just a bunch of people. And you might get a, a lot of smart data scientists, data engineers, and, you know, but that's expensive. And, and by definition, if that's really expensive, each incremental addition of a, a data scientist or data engineer is not as scalable as scaling a platform. Now, the more that you invest in platforms, the better your process will be. And the reason why is because of the limitation I spoke about with humans, right? Because humans can you know, do things as fast as machines, and we all know this. I don't have to go into that whole spiel around automation and AI and all that type of stuff. But you know, the, be the more platforms you have, the better your process will be because now you're operating off of something that's a little bit more rational and organized and standardized. So that way you can share information across teams and that way the people who are integrating with that system are more efficient, right? So, you know, I kind of spoke a little bit to kind of interrogating the why, and it really comes down to, I want to be competitive. I want to make sure that the stuff that I know, I'm feeling good about it. The stuff that I don't know, I'm learning about and understanding better, and then eliminating or minim minimizing the amount of false positives, right? M making actions um, and decisions and you don't really understand the the details of if that thing is going to work or not. So data can be a really useful tool to 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 define and 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 improve those decisions. You know, when I when I talk to clients, I always tell them everything by way of data analytics measurement is really expressly there to inform decision making. So whether that's making faster decisions or making smarter decisions, or even just having higher confidence in the decisions you're making, so that way the organization, you know, is moving forward in a, in a really, you know, smooth way. You know, that's really what it's about, right? It's really about the decision making. It shouldn't be about, oh, I have this fancy new tool, now I'm gonna write a press release about it. It really, it really should inform decision making. And so it goes back to what I was saying with being competitive, right? Like, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're running a business right now, and you're thinking, you know, you have your budget, you know, where should I spend it? I really challenge you to think about it in the, across the people process and platform kind of spectrum, because then, you know, I think that people are the most important investment you'll make, right? Get the right people in there, but then you also don't want to just hire a bunch of people just to kind of like be doing data entry and moving papers around, right? You want the people that are there to have the right tools so that way they can be a little bit more creative and you know, um, go to clients and inspire them and be able to you know, um, drive the right insights. And so if those people are spending all their time sifting through data, running models, um, then they're not gonna be as efficient, right? And then you know, the last thing I'll end with, you, know, you talked about machine learning and that's a, a buzzword that's been thrown around in the industry and I totally understand that. And I, you know, I think there's, there's the, the, the most simplified way I would I would talk about machine learning is kind of in two tracks, right? There's there's something I'm trying to predict or there's some metric that I'm looking at that if I take this data, I can create a causal link or like a correlation like you know a connection between metric X and outcome Y. And by understanding that and looking at a bunch of different metrics, I can understand which metric is more important than the other. And then I can also understand if I increase or decrease or change something, how would that impact the thing that I'm trying to predict? So that's one use case of machine learning. And when you think about how machine learning balloons, it's running different types of models that give you different types of outputs. And that, you know, depending on the type of data, some models are better fit for um, certain types of data. And then obviously, as you add more information in, the model gets better and smarter over time. Um, it may, the model might not even get better, but you're still, you know, you're still like learning more, right? Um, so that's the whole point of a machine learning. As more data comes in, the model can sort of um, improve or just get more information and give you more information. I think the other application for machine learning is kind of like unstructured or unsupervised learning where it's, you know, you, you're not, you don't really have a defined goal and you sort of put everything in there and it gives you uh, a pattern. The, the model itself will tell you, okay, this data is telling you this, right? And so that when you think of machine learning, those those two applications are valuable, right? Because if you know exactly what you're trying to predict, and you can run a model to help you say, of these 10 levers that I can pull, this one's more important, and if I pull this one, I'm gonna drive X amount more growth. 
most marketers would say or most business owners would say that's valuable and then for the second phase the second bucket where it's you know i'm looking at that for example all my dark data if i'm able to run a model that can tell me well this these metrics are not useful these are useful and if you put them together this is what it's telling you would that be useful yes now when you think about which one do i do first most organizations would prefer the more structured approach first right because then there's a very clear business question that you're asking and and answering and so i would probably say most organizations would focus on the first one but the second one has a lot of value especially when going back to the point about competitiveness right um you know if you're in a very highly competitive industry you should probably be spending a certain percentage of your budget and of your investment and of your time to do some r d to do some test and learn so really like trying new things making mistakes but each incremental mistake makes you smarter so so that's what i would say um you know is the reason and some 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 general ideas on how to go about um, approaching approaching this issue. Thank you so much, Ikechi, for joining us today. And if you are an organization and you don't joined us and you liked what we discussed today, feel free to leave a comment if you like more information or if you'd like for us to discuss other topics that are of interest to you. Join us and follow us on CIO Africa for all the information that you need. And with this, thank you and see you next time.